Welcome back here to part two. Um, if you'll remember in the last tutorial, what we did is we took this uh, Cinema 4D track and we put it into um, our scene here uh, uh, in After Effects. Um, so we basically have the uh, tutorial pan on top of our footage. Um, and by itself, we just have this cube. And then if we make sure that we're looking at the original footage that we dragged in, we now have it stuck relatively close to where we want. But what we have are these buildings in the foreground that are making it difficult to make it look realistic. Now there's not much we can do about this crane in the background. So if I was smart, I would have shot from a lower angle. Uh, and if I had the ability to, I would have so that uh, this would be in the sky and I could mask that out. But what I can do is uh, scope out these buildings so that it looks like it's stuck there. So what I would need to do is I'm gonna duplicate my uh, a copy of my footage and I'm gonna put it t on top of tutorial pan. So by default, it's just gonna, it's basically just putting the video layer on top of your model so you're not gonna see anything. Um, but then what we're gonna do is we are going to click on that clip and we're gonna zoom in here and we are going to click on our uh, roto brush tool. So it might be really large in size. If you hold down command or control in Windows and drag, you can change the size of the tool. And all we're gonna do now is we're gonna come in and we're gonna select from the beginning of the clip, we're gonna select the things we wanna mask out, which are some of these buildings here. And I'm just going to do this really quickly. Um, you know, you might have to do a lot more detailed work than I am doing here, but so we're gonna we're gonna do something like that, and then down here um, we're just gonna track it forward. I'm gonna hit the uh, space bar, and you'll notice that it's it's doing a pre pretty good job of uh, of tracking, and it's only gonna do the first like 20 frames, I believe, but using page up or page down on the keyboard, um, you can go further than that and add in uh, more things to track. So now I've got another 20 frames and it ends and I'm gonna change it again. Just because I'm panning, I wanna do it this way. If you ever extend too far, you can hold alt or yeah, Alt on the keyboard and it will get rid of that overextended stuff. Um, and so I want to make sure I don't have any of the construction site behind it highlighted. Okay, so let's just use the first two seconds as an example. Now if I go back into my composition tutorial, look at that. I now have very quickly created the uh, shadow the, uh, sorry, the uh, mask that I want so that my building appears as though it's now fully stuck inside of this uh, footage. So that's looking really good. One other thing I didn't do and that you can do throughout this project is make real-time edits, edits over in Cinema 4D. So what I want to do is make sure now that I had my building model drag it into my scene, child of the cube, and everything's uh, zeroed out. And then let's, uh, I want it to be rotated 90. Oops. I'm gonna hold shift, rotate. So I hit full 90 and I'm gonna get rid of my cube in the background. You might now have to take out the model and the plane from your cube. And let's jump back into After Effects and let's see if it updated. It didn't because I didn't save it. And now, there it is, okay? And the only reason why we're having a material issue is because some of those building model materials are not saved um, in the right location. So the same thing we can do now that those materials are in here, but they're saved at a different location. Uh, save the project with the assets and I'm gonna save it uh, in the same location. Let's call it tutorial three. This is a 
quick adjustment that I should have done in advance, but you're just kind of learning through some of my mistakes here. Tutorial three, drag it in. Cool. Now I have it in, I'm gonna go back into my standard final view. And there it is, it's stuck in my footage and it's doing a good job of tracking. Now it's only gonna do those first two seconds. So let's just focus in on those two seconds by just trimming the comp to, to that location. But now I wanna do some color correction. The, the great thing about this is that now you have it set up in a way that your tutorial is a separate layer. So you can see here, because it's a two, separate layer, we can go into our effects and do some, Just I'm just gonna type in color and you can see that I'll bring in some uh, uh, color correction tools. So um, first thing you want to probably do is uh, do something with the um, curves under color correction. I can give it a, a minor S curve and that's starting to kind of match my background a little bit. I might even intensify the light a little bit because I can see that some of these buildings are really popping white from the sun angle. So there you go, just like that, it's starting to look more realistic. Uh, the other thing I could do is, I might wanna just come in here and just kind of affect what my uh, exposure is doing a little bit, just overall, and uh, you know, so I can adjust the whole building as one. So we'll just give it a little exposure bump just want to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. Uh, we can add some saturation to this. So in this case, I don't want to go, I probably almost want to desaturate a little bit just to kind of match the overall desaturated tone of the background scene. And yeah, so that's, that's a really quick way to get this looking the way that you want. Um, now, Obviously what you can do is you can export this whole scene and now bring it into Premiere Pro and do a, a color correction for everything. Once you basically bake this into one clip, um, you'll be able to take a clip that looks like something like uh, our original that we showed you as an example. Um, and edit this whole clip and color correct it. So the whole thing is now taking on the changes that you want it to affect. But, that is uh, basically the result that we've gotten to in After Effects. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that this gives you an understanding of how you can do some really powerful architectural visual visualization work using Cinema 4D's tools and some of your mo modeling uh, knowledge uh, to create a very realistic looking building rendering inside of a, a scene done in 3D. So. Thanks for watching this tutorial and uh, stay tuned for more tutorials like this.